viewers, welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. That's a 2010 Chevrolet, it's a 1500, it's got the big 5.3. And he writes, check engine light, recent DAS message, Titan gas cap, slight stumble on it, idle, front brakes, pad rotors provided, New York State inspection, tire rotation, grease, lube, question mark. With a diagram of how the tires need to be rotated. So, let's get her done. I'll bring you along. See why the money lights on and see what we can do to fix it. We are into the engine controller. We're gonna pull some codes out of it. I imagine we got some EVAP codes if he has his gas cap message. The engine lights on, the gas cap message is not up now. We'll go to current and history. Cancer vent circuit, imagine that, large leak. Holy, holy smokes! <laughs> What's this thing, European? Uh, bank one sensor two high voltage one sensor two delayed rich response one two insufficient activity two two high voltage one two one two 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 vent circuit wow so it looks like uh we've got some rear two sensor codes now, i don't know which ones of these are history which are current yeah i guess it says history current you know usually on gms I'm going to give you a little trick here, what I like to do. We will uh, pop out. We will just go to a generic OBD2, because this way we can get current, history, pending, permanent, uh, a little bit easier. See which ones. That way there we don't have to do a whole lot of reading. All right, so we have three codes. Monitors are set, so we're going to go right here to diagnostic trouble code freeze frame data. I'm sure we're gonna see the same bit. So our current codes uh, are 449, so our classic canister vent valve GM code, uh, large leak code, and bake one sensor two, uh, bias stuck lean, okay. Pending, bank one sensor two, pendings for the EVAP, and then the codes that are in there permanently. So that's your mode 10 down there. So uh, permanent codes for EVAP. So what I say we do, uh, we're going to back out of here. We will uh, go back to uh, OEM specific. Look at the O2 sensor, see what they're doing. EVAP system's not going to be an issue. And we'll see what's going on there. Whoa! So we're going to take, we're going to pop right into the ECM here. Because clearly there's something going on with the rear O2 sensors. We will pick O2 sensors. That looks like all four of them. We'll just look at them because we really don't care about much anything else. They're all biased right now, about 450 millivolts. Pretty normal. Fire it up. Let's get these all up in a graph. Probably be the easiest thing to do. They're going to open loop or closed loop rather. So we got sensor bank one, one and two, bank two, one and two. We should see our rear O2 sensors. So these are gonna be the ones uh, post catalytic converter. So, so it's gonna be the sensor twos, this one and this one. Uh, the truck's pretty well warmed up, right? Cause they dropped it off. Yeah, yeah, truck's actually fully warmed up. Um, we should see them hanging in that 700 millivoltish range. Six to 700 would be my guess. I'm gonna bring the idle up. Try to hold it about 2,000. We should see our front O2 sensors switching rich to lean, as, assuming the scan tool can process the data that fast. Sometimes if we look at them individual, we'll see them switching faster. So it looks like our upstream seems to be switching fine. Downstream on bank two sensor two seems to be working. This is our upstream for bank one. That seems to be working. Now your switch rate that you see on the scan tool may not be super accurate because it is processed data. It could be switching it, you know, five times faster than what you're actually seeing. Especially if you're seeing like these little blips. I wouldn't get too excited about that. Uh, but the fact is, it is switching. That upstream is a tad bit slower compared to the process data on this one. 
but I do notice bank one sensor two didn't really seem to move much from its bias. All right, so what we'll do now, bank two sensor two seems to be reading pretty steady. We want to see if they can respond to uh, a rich and lean, so we want to induce a vacuum leak let the fuel trim correct for that vacuum leak and then seal the vacuum leak so it's going to force it lean and then when that vacuum leak sealed off it'll it'll force it rich and we'll see if the O2 sensor has the ability to respond so the easiest way to do that while you're sitting in the car is use the brake pedal if it's a vacuum boost so I'm going to sit here and pump the brakes that should make it go lean okay so our rear O2 sensor here responds our upstream is responding now I'm still pumping the brake Fuel trim should be correcting like crazy, so when I let go of the brake, it should go rich, but look, I think one sensor two is still hanging around the bias. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna let it go back rich. The engine shouldn't stall, but you can see it force the upstream rich. Our downstream is also responding, so bank two sensor two appears to be working and responding and has a decent amount of oxygen storage capacity. So we're still running really rich. Rear O2 sensor is pretty well pegged out, upstream is pegged out. Once these fuel trims cracked again, it should go back to switching. Might, might take it a minute because we pumped the brake pedal for quite a while. But that's a free tip for you. How to make a vacuum leak and not get out of the car. <laughs> Only works on vacuum assist systems though, without electric vacuum pumps or belt drive vacuum pumps. But it really screws up the fuel trim so takes it a minute to kind of get back in its funk. We'll bring the RPMs up, get it in a different fuel cell block or fuel trim block. Looking at scan data, I would say bank two appears to be working here. However, I am a little bit concerned here with bank one sensor two. We'll let the upstream steady back out, let the fuel trims recorrect, get everything switching good again, and then we're going to try that test again on bank one sensor two. But it looks like that sensor is dead, uh, open circuit. Well, probably not open circuited because it is changing voltage slightly. Everybody looks pretty happy again. I'm going to pump the brake pedal again. We should see bank one sensor one again go lean. Because all we're doing is creating a vacuum leak. And then technically it should force bank one sensor two lean. It should pull right down to like 35 millivolts. Okay, yeah, 35, 25. But it doesn't. You can see it only drops down to 290. And then we're going to, now the system's going to go super rich. And we should watch that peg out around 900. Like, like I say, it looks like bank two works. Bank one definitely has an issue, uh, and that's the one that we had the current code for. So we're going to look at that. I don't think we're going to find any circuit problems. Uh, these trucks do have a tendency to rub the wires through on the frame where the sensors uh, plug in on top of the wires, or where the wires plug in on top of the frame. Um, okay, well, we have some direction there. We know bank one sensor two definitely seems to be on the fritz. So let's, uh, we had an EVAP code too. Let's take a quick peek at that while we're still sitting here. Uh, what do we want? Maybe a purge and seal. Uh, let's purge solenoid. Do we have an EVAP purge and seal? Did I look right past it? Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Bear with me, folks. First day. So one thing we want to look at is fuel tank pressure sensor right now. We should be about 1.5 volts of atmospheric pressure. Canister vent valve open. We're at 1.57. So I think what we'll do, canister vent valve is venting so it's open. So we want to take and we want to pull a little purge on this thing. We want to make sure our purge solenoid's working. We're going to crank it right open. We should see our tank pressure drop. We should see our voltage increase. 
This is going to tell us our purge solenoid is working. Indian's not going to be happy with me. She's going to get real stumbly. So right now I can tell you that the purge solenoid is working. It says the canister vent valve is closed. So technically we should be sucking the sides of the tank together right now. <laughs> However, when we seal the system off, we're probably going to watch that go right back to atmospheric pressure is my guess. Yep, and immediately drop back to about one and a half volts. And technically the system is still sealed because it says it's not venting, uh, which that, that's wrong. Uh, canister vent valve is definitely not closing. We'll go like this. We'll shut the truck off. We will go to the vent solenoid. We'll see if we can hear it clicking. I don't hear it clicking back there. Okay, so we have some direction. Uh, we know a little bit what's going on. We have a code for a canister vent valve circuit. Uh, typically the vent valves go open circuit uh, and we have an idea what's going on with the rear oxygen sensors. So let's get it up in the air, go underneath it and do some actual checking now. So we got her up in the air. Here's the canister vent valve. She is no virgin. It has been done before. Let's take and see if we can't get it unplugged. Still has the factory connector on it. It's got a pink wire and a white wire. Key on engine off. Our pink should be the hot one. And it is. And then our control side is going to be the white one. So uh, we're going to take our power probe here. It has a special function. Uh, let's see. We're going to go to volt. And then we're going to go to driver test. That's going to put voltage at the tip. Some computer safe voltage it tells me. We're going to stick it in there. Oops, let me uh, turn you down here a little bit. You can't see. So we're, we are in the control side, so the white wire, and then we're going to turn the vent solenoid on. And then we're going to turn it back off. Uh, easily could have done that with a test light. Uh, so this means we have uh, power, we have control, but we have a junk canister vent valve. Uh, we could very easily check that for resistance, which I assume it is either really high or open. We're gonna take our power probe. We're gonna see if we can get on one of these pins. Now the power probe, I think, only like, reads up to 10,000 ohms. So if it's above that, it's not gonna say anything. Yeah, and we are completely open circuit because I'm touching both pins. If there was any resistance, it would show us on the screen. That's zero ohms right there, but it is completely open circuited. We know we have power. We know we have control, so we need to a new canister vent valve and that's what we need typically these vent valves split due to rust this one's looking a little pussy so now we are down by this is the connector just hanging under here for bank one sensor two so it's going to be driver side uh calic burr we're going to take and unplug this we're just going to do a bypass test now we're going to make sure we have everything here now i didn't get a diagram i'm kind of hugging you guys so it's kind of weird uh, our two wire colors that are the same are going to be for the heater circuit. Uh, so one of those is probably a full-time power. The other two wires, one's going to be uh, ground, uh, PCM ground. The other one's going to be signal return. So it's going to be the two on the left. So we're just going to unplug it. Connector doesn't look pussy. Uh, we don't have any heater codes. I'm not super concerned with whether or not the heater is working. Uh, simply because we couldn't even force it lean, but we should have power. Yeah, so that one's a power. Uh, the So looking at this connector like this, bottom right is the power. That's going to be for the heater. Uh, the other one there on the top. What's up, Mrs. O? Is this something we all need to see? Or? <laughs> oh, I only came out to share it with you. Yeah, oh, so this whole world is joining us. Not the whole world. Anymore. It's right here. Same spot you got you. You see it? Yep, I do. Okay, now go back now. <laughs> Where were we? Heater power. This is going to be heater ground. Uh, let's see. If we use the scan tool, we can probably just activate that ground real quick. Uh, let me see. Bank one, sensor one. Bank one, sensor two. Heater. I'm going to probe into the heater. Usually these tests are very limited on GM. So it may, we, I don't know if we're going to hear it, but let's try it. 
Yep, so that's the heater on 100%, and then it just kicked us out of the test. So it only allows it for a few seconds, but uh, that tells us our heater circuit works. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll have to move you. We're gonna take and we're gonna go back to scan data because we're gonna do a very quick bypass test to make sure the circuit is good. Let me get bank one sensor two there. Show all, show selected. Just bear with me folks, I'll move you. Get this up on the screen. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So we're gonna check. So the way it's plugged in, I, I think the gray wire is ground. It is, so the gray wire on your O2 sensor. So looking at this connector, the top left is PCM ground, which that indicates. And then the bottom one, bottom left here, so it's gonna be the black wire on this O2 sensor is the signal. Uh, which we have a bias voltage on. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch scan data, which right now it's at 450 millivolts, and I'm gonna reach in here with just my pinky finger. I'm gonna lick it, and I'm gonna stick it from power to the O2 signal wire, and it should drive it high. And then, I don't know if I can touch the ground at the same time, because there's a little donger in there. And we're gonna try to drive the signal low by taking and just touching the signal wire. So I should be able to touch the signal wire and then touch the exhaust or something and pull it down low, which it looks like it's working. So let me show you on scan data here. All right, folks, so there we, let me make that a little fatter for you. Get the fat line. So there we are, we're at 450 millivolts. Uh, you can see it up here. I'm gonna take my finger and I'm just gonna touch the power and I'm gonna touch the signal wire at the same time. We should drive it as high as it can go, which is 1275. Okay, so it tells me the circuit's good to the PCM. Now I want to try to touch the signal wire and ground at the same time to see if I can pull it down low. There we go. So I'm touching the signal wire in the exhaust system and we pulled it low. Signal wire and power, we drove it high. Open circuit, 450 millivolts. Uh, it just has a bad O2 sensor, simple as that. Now this is the wire for bank two sensor one. Now these have a tendency to chafe and you can see I didn't unplug it. Let's pull this thing back. I see there is some chafage there. I want to see if it's getting to the wires yet. Because we did have codes for this one, but history codes. I can't see up in there. There is some chafage. Can you, are you guys in the camera? Yeah, you can see the chafage. I just want to see, sometimes they'll darn near rub through the, rub through the wires also. It's kind of odd that it had codes for this one. However, it appeared to be working. So, yeah, it looks like the best I can see. Get this peeled back up here. And I see some rust and junk in here, but I don't see where it's rubbing through the wiring harness yet. It's just rubbed through the outer sheathing here. So you gotta be careful with these sheavies because uh, they like to sit here and chafe on the frame and rub through. Uh, I would say that this one is still functioning. I'll give the customer the option. We have 102 sensor that's failed. Uh, we had this one that evidently had failed at some point, but appears to be working currently. Uh, I'll give them the option. Technically, it only needs one at this time. So that's that, folks. That one's pretty easy. Uh, easy to do a bypass test on this O2 sensor. Well, there you are. Uh, you know, simply just using your finger and scan data. Uh, those signal wires are very low current. Uh, that's why it's important to have you know good clean tight connections don't go packing these full of dielectric grease um, you'll cause all kinds of issues just fix one the other day and that's always wrong with the car somebody took the o2 sensor packed it full of dielectric grease uh, anything you do to disrupt that connection you know screw up your pin fit uh, anything you can see that they're uh, very sensitive or if you have any kind of liquid in there that can carry current because you can tell just you know just a damp finger going across power going across ground drive that signal low drive it high so we'll get him an O2 sensor, uh, possibly two if he wants one. Technically, he only needs one. And then that canister vent belt we'll put together, make sure it works. Everybody's going to be happy. All right, folks, now for not a sponsor showed up. Uh, I installed a new canister vent belt. Uh, some of you that are keen and aware can see, hey, Mr. O, that's not the right one. Uh, I don't believe in this whole little rigmarole that GM has you put on. This is like the third or fourth vent valve this truck's probably had. Just buy the cheap ones. Buy the ones that fit the Impalas. You can get the ones that have the remote filter. Uh, they're about four times the cost of these. And frankly, they don't work. 
any better than these ones, I should say. So I just put the ones for like the Impalas on here. They've got the filter on the end. You can put the OE style back on there, hook it back to the filter tube, but it's honestly, it's just a waste of time and waste of money, uh, at least in our climate. I just leave the tube here just in case some guy in the future wants to do something with it, but this is completely suitable. Uh, we did put driver's side rear O2 sensor in it. Customer said, do them both. He ain't coming back. Pay me now or pay me later. Uh, so we put both NTK sensors in the rear. They're all plugged in and uh, being that as connector holder or the retainer there was already broke. I just took and zip tied it up to that harness so it's out of the way. Now we're gonna start it up, see if it works. We also did the tire rotation, front brakes and ordered the sway bar link for it. It's got broken sway bar link. Ain't gonna pass. Uh, let's pop back in your data. I just fired it up. Uh, looks like our sensor two is working. That's good. Let's get everything else on the screen we need. So we want all four row two sensors. Show selected. Let's get these babies up in a graph. Unfortunately, there are a few things that could go wrong here at this point because now we have fully functioning rear O2 sensors. So if there is a catalytic converter, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> thank you Rona, uh, if there's a catalytic converter that's failing, you know, now it can actually run and test that. And then the other problem is like with the EVAP, now that we have a canister vent valve that's working or hopefully working, uh, we could have a large EVAP leak or a small EVAP leak or leak an EVAP system now that it has the ability to test it. So sometimes that's kind of hard to reiterate to a customer that comes in and, <laughs> not a sponsor, uh, it comes in and, you know, we fix quote unquote the engine light and, you know, now it comes back with something else on it. That's why I typically like to run a drive cycle. Uh, let's prop the throttle open, get the converters warming up here a little bit. I see they're already starting to warm up and kind of steady out. I got it all warmed up. Both rear O2s are looking pretty steady. This is the one we were having problems with. So one, two, so I'm gonna take force and lean again, pump the brakes. We should watch that drop right down to nothing. And it did, all of them should have. Looks like the converters are working pretty well. Comparison of the upstream uh, going lean versus how long it takes it downstream to go lean. So uh, so that's good Shouldn't have any uh, problems with the PO 420 or 430 now you guys probably seen those rear O2 sensors switching a little bit uh, When we first started it now, it's because they were cold Sure takes it quite a while to do a field trim correction here. I did go through and do the O2 sensor heater relearn uh, prior to uh, Coming back in here and kicking the video on. Let's see, I think we can plot them on, plot them all on a single graph if we want. So our two green lines there are our our catalytic converters or our downstream O2 sensors. Of course, the graph gets kind of mumbled jumbled up there, but uh, our blue and our red trace are our upstreams. Like I say, this is process data, so they don't switch as quickly as they do IRL, which means in real life. So you kind of got to take your process scan data with a grain of salt, but um, how do we undo this? I don't even know. Cancel merging, push that button. Well, we can see our rear O2s are working fantastic. So I'm happy with that. All right, now next thing, we need to move on. Active test, we're gonna go purge and seal. We've already been here. We'll pop in here. We should be at 1.5 volts or thereabouts. So there's that. We're gonna pull a purge on it. Now it should have closed the back door so it's not venting. So we should be able to pull this into a vacuum. Uh, if you'll think pressure, we gotta be careful. We're only at 10%. We're gonna pop her up here a little bit because if you get too much vacuum it'll kick you out let that get up to about three volts now we're going to seal the system off now technically 
this should hold pressure. Now there is going to be some decay. It's going to start dwindling down on us naturally. The rate of decay versus you know how much fuels in it is always kind of to be determined. Uh, if you have a gross leak, you know obviously that drops back to 1.5 very very quickly. But just looking at it and and how fast it's dropping, I'm going to say that we're we're sealed. I'll show you another trick you can do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open that vent back up, let air back into the tank. We're just going to go to the vent solenoid. It's vented, should be back to 1.5 or close to it, and it is. I'll take my shutter off. We grab that sway bar link that Vance just brought for me. Thanks. We're gonna go key on engine off. I'll roll my window up and see if we can hear the vent valve clicking. We should. Yep, so I hear it under there. I'm gonna roll all the windows up. We're gonna, oh you son of a, shit back window doesn't work and I rolled it down to get a brake rotor. This sucks. We're going to leave that shut and through natural vacuum leak detection, uh, depending on if the gas tank is gas is hot or cold, we're either going to put it into a vacuum or we're going to build pressure. Hey Jay, yep. would you open that passenger rear door and see if the window will go up? On this truck? Yes. However, if they're, um, you know, if the ambient temperature and the fuel temperature is kind of neutral it may not change did i make a mistake oh sweet hallelujah bad master switch yeah yeah it doesn't work from this window so i'm going to give this a little bit but it looks like we're starting to build pressure um, and what that'll indicate to us is that we don't have a small leak our canister vent valve has the ability to seal and we don't have a small leak so i can let this thing go knowing that uh, it's going to run the evap test and you can see already we're, we're building pressure uh, point or 0 0.1 0 0.12 we're starting to build pressure now millimeters of mercury uh, so that's good because the canister vent valve is shut and i can confidently say we're not going to have a small leak large leak or any evap problem so when i open this it's going to go back to atmospheric or whatever its base voltage is you ready it's open and it makes a freaking liar out of me you son of a whiskey. We're going to shut it back down. Let it sit here and build again. I'll let it get a little higher. All right, I should just cut the camera on. A few seconds later, it's higher, so we'll shut it back off. And then you can see our pressure drops in the tank. So that tells us it can seal. Obviously, the fuel's hot. It's volatile. Uh, it's no different than, uh, you know, having a gas can out in your shed in the middle of the summer, and you go out there, and the thing's blown up like a balloon. Essentially the same process here. I'm just sealing it off, letting it naturally build pressure, make sure we don't have a small leak, open it back up, and then there we go. So that, that's a great test to do, like just out in the parking lot, especially on a nice hot day. That'll build pressure. I mean, the second you close that thing, it starts building pressure pretty quick. Um, and I guess that's it. We will back out. We know our O2 sensors work now, or at least the one that was broken. And, I'm, and it wasn't really a parts cannon approach just before you put that comment. Okay, it kind of was. No, it wasn't. We're going to clear the codes. We're going to put the sway bar link on it. Give it back to this guy. He's going to run it through a drive cycle. Bring it back. And I don't foresee anything else going wrong. Drive cycle was done when it got here. And it looks like the converters are working. Looks like the EVAP system's working. So we should be good to go. No, I didn't want to do that. Stop. Let's see. All right, we're done. It's lunchtime. All right, folks, that's that. Um, I hope you understood. Whoa! Man down. Uh, I hope you understood what I was talking about and the reason we did what we did uh, or the approach that we use. Did it absolutely need both oxygen sensors at this time? No, it needed one. Uh, oxygen sensors are pretty cheap and pretty easy to change. So... Um, you know, I told him if it was mine, I would just do both of them because we had codes for both of them. And evidently at one point in its life, it didn't like the one over here on the passenger side. Uh, so that's that canister vent valve again. Use your best decision. You want to put an OE back on it where you hook it to that vent hose that runs up above the transmission. Go for it. Uh, around here, running dirt roads, salt, all that stuff. That's a big fat waste of money. They only last about two years. 
and then they go bad regardless of which one you put on. Um, whether you have the remote filter location or you just put the you know the $25 one back there that has a filter built into it. Either way, um, it's up to you. You can use either one. It's your choice. And that's what we're about. We're about choices. And why don't you choose to go down in that comment section, leave a question, comment, criticism, concern. Find us on the socials, the Insta, the Facebook. Don't have any others. Don't have no Twitter or MySpace, if that's even a thing still. Just remember, viewers, if I could do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.